The MediaPipe Image Classifier task lets you perform classifications on images. Use this task to identify what an image represents among a set of categories defined at training time. To get started using the image classifier, first, take a look at the available image classification models. You can see this list in the documentation linked in the description. Now, this list might change over time, so definitely check the docs for the latest. There are two recommended models here with two available formats each. Efficient Net Light 0 and Efficient Net Light 2. Both models use an efficient net architecture and were trained using ImageNet to recognize a thousand classes like trees, animals, food, vehicles, humans, and more. A complete list of classes is linked in the description. The Efficient Net Light 0 model is recommended because it strikes a balance between latency and accuracy. It is both accurate enough and lightweight enough for most use cases. Efficient Net Light 2 is generally more accurate than Efficient Net Light 0, but it's also slower and more memory intensive. So, Efficient Net Light 2 is appropriate for use cases where accuracy is a higher priority than speed or size. If your use case requires a more unique classification solution, then you can customize a model using MediaPipe Model Maker. I've linked to a guide in the docs, but if you'd like a video on getting started, let me know in the comments. Now that you've chosen a model, install the Tasks Vision package. You can download the package using NPM and use a JavaScript compilation tool like Webpack or you can import the package using a CDN. Before continuing with the code, there are a couple of concepts worth noting. First, MediaPipe for the web uses WebAssembly, or WASM, a binary instruction format for a stack-based VM. Now, you don't need to know about WASM to use MediaPipe solutions for the web. In simplest terms, WASM allows non-web-based code to run on the web. And second, as a developer, you're accustomed to making your code lightweight so your website can load quickly for a great user experience. And machine learning has come a long way in terms of both size and performance to the point that inference can run on all sorts of devices. So to keep that swift experience for users, you don't want to bundle your model or WASM binary into your website. Instead, you will store them server-side and provide links when initializing your classifier. So let's take a look at that now. Here we have a function, create image classifier. First, we configure our WASM binary loading using the file set resolver for vision tasks method. Then we create the image classifier using the image classifier create from options method, passing in the file set resolver you just created and the model. You can also provide optional parameters, like the maximum number of results the model should return when running inference, and the running mode for inference, which is either image or video. Image is the default value. To run classification on an image, use the image classifier classify method, passing the image source. This function is synchronous, which is good to keep in mind when designing your UI. The source can be an HTML canvas element, HTML video element, HTML image element, image data, or image bitmap. This function returns an image classification result object. There are a series of classifications in order of how confident the model is that the image belongs to the given category. In this example, the first category has a display name of Passer Domesticus, which apparently is a house sparrow. I had to look that one up. It's very cute. The score of 0.91406 is a score out of one for how likely the image is to belong to the Passer Domesticus class. So that's about 91%. The scores of all categories will add up to a total of one, so we can definitely stop there and assume that's what's in our image. You can access these classification results 
using classification result dot classifications. So if you want to access the display name of the first result, you would use classification result dot classifications. Grab the first result, which of course is the zeroth, and then use the display name property. To classify frames in a video, get the current time using performance dot now. Then get the classification result using the image classifier dot classify for video method, passing your video element and the current time. And that's it. With this code, you can get started with image classification in your own web app. Check out a complete code example on CodePen and view all the available solutions on the MediaPipe website. Or get more hands on with MediaPipe solutions in MediaPipe Studio. All these resources are linked in the description. As you can see, there are a lot of exciting places to go from here, so keep me in the loop. Tell me what you're working on. Tell me what you learn. Tell me what you still want to know. Drop a comment below or on LinkedIn. I can't wait to see what you build.